Hello again. Today I'm going to talk about chest pain and heart attacks and what you need to know regarding management of this particular medical problem. So I'm going to keep it brief and concise and I'm going to only be concentrating on heart attacks and nothing else. So the first thing I want to mention is that chest pain is a very common problem in India. And in fact, in practice, we see a fair number of chest pains every day and not every one of these is a heart attack and I'll talk about the causes later. But what you need to remember is that heart attacks are the most worrying cause of chest pain and must be treated as soon as possible. Now with advancements in medical therapy, there has been a reduction in the number of patients who are suffering from heart attacks, but still we see a fair few almost every day. And this is because of a number of different factors. So what am I going to be talking about in this particular presentation. First thing I'll talk about what is chest pain? What are the symptoms of cardiac chest pain? What is a heart attack? What are the tests you will need? And what you need to do if you have chest pain that is cardiac in origin, that is if you are having a heart attack. So first of all, what is chest pain? And chest pain is basically a discomfort in the chest. Now the description of chest pain can vary from individual to individual. And many of them say either it is crushing or it is a tightness, a heaviness, a pricking pain or a sharp pain. Many such descriptions are given to us many times. And not always is each one of them pointing towards cardiac disease. Chest pain can affect any part of the chest. And the part that is affected can sometimes indicate to us what the underlying cause is. Now, when you're looking at the causes of chest pain, the most worrying one, of course, is a heart attack or what we call a myocardial infarction over here. But there are other causes, many causes. In fact, I've listed a few of them over here. One worrying cause is a pulmonary embolism. And I will talk about this in another talk of mine at some point. This is where there is a blood clot in the arteries of the lungs. And this is a potentially fatal condition, just like a heart attack and requires emergency management. Aortic dissection is another cause of chest pain where there is tear in the aorta, which is a major artery that comes out of the heart. This again is a serious condition and requires immediate management. Otherwise, most patients who have a large aortic dissection don't survive. Myocarditis is all, also called as inflammation of the heart muscle. And this is another cause of cardiac chest pain. Pericarditis, which is inflammation of the lining of the uh, heart. And so around the heart is a thin protective casing that allows the heart to contract and relax and this when it gets inflamed it can cause pain and this is called pericarditis other causes of non-cardiac sort of uh, causes are acid peptic disease or acidity a very common cause very similar to cardiac pain but there are certain features that help us differentiate between cardiac pain and pain from acid peptic disease gallbladder stones usually patients have abdominal pain from this but sometimes they get a lot of acidity so they get associated chest pain from that muscular or skeletal problems such as costochondritis this is basically a condition where there is inflammation of the cartilage that connects the rib to the breastbone this is again a common problem and one way of differentiating whether your chest pain is from cardiac or whether it is because of the muscle is to just press over the chest wall and if you have pain when you press it is likely but not 100% certainly, chest pain from a skeletal cause or a muscular cause. Finally, skin rashes such as herpes zoster. This is basically reactivated chicken pox or also called a shingles. And this can also cause chest pain. So what is a heart attack? So I just want you to draw your attention to this picture on the right over here. You can see that this is an outline of the heart muscle. And what you see in the front over here are arteries that supply blood to the heart muscle. So there are two or three different, there are three different arteries with different branches that supply muscle, uh, blood to the heart muscle. And these arteries can unfortunately get filled up with cholesterol or basically fat depositions. As the arteries get more and more narrowed, a blood clot can form within these arteries. And when it gets, a, when a clot is formed, it can completely cut off the blood supply to a segment of the heart muscle, leading to what is called as a heart attack. The good thing is, if a diagnosis of a heart attack is made, patients can recover fully as long as timely treatment is administered. 
Nowadays, we have guidelines as to try and treat patients within a few hours of them getting symptoms. So if possible, we try and treat within two hours, but we have managed patients up to 12 hours and saved most of the heart muscle. But the more you delay treatment, the more likely the complication rate and the more likely will you have trouble with regards to your heart in the long term. So what are the symptoms of a heart attack? The first and foremost symptom is chest tightness or heaviness. This is usually seen in the upper part of the chest. So a lot of times patients hold their fist over their chest like so. And this pain can either go towards the jaw or it can come down their arm. Often cardiac pain, which is from a heart attack, usually goes down the left arm. Very rarely it goes down the right arm, but a lot of times it goes through to the back and also to the jaw. Associated with this pain is profuse amount of sweating. Even if they're sitting in an air-conditioned room, patients can get a lot of sweating, and this is because of the severity of the pain. A large number of patients experience breathing difficulty, and this one is sometimes a sign by itself of a heart attack. Many patients feel that they're about to reach their end, and this is a feeling of impending doom. And associated with the pain because of the severity is nausea and vomiting. So we have had plenty of patients walk through who have had cardiac sounding chest pain who come with profuse vomiting. And sometimes it is difficult to differentiate whether this is gastric acidity causing the pain or the chest tightness, which is where investigations come into play. So these are the four P's you can remember when it comes to chest pain from a heart attack. One is pain in the chest that is radiating to the shoulder and the jaw. Pale skin, because they become their blood pressure may drop and they may become pale. Perspiration, that is sweating, and a rapid pulse that is weak. Now, I don't expect you to understand or be able to evaluate whether your pulse is rapid or weak, but this is one of the signs that we look for when we assess patients with a heart attack. So what to do if you are having a heart attack? So these are first aid tips. The first thing that you need to do without fail is call for help. Now, if you feel you're having a heart attack, either grab the phone and call a relative, grab uh, shout out loud to someone who's at home, or call an ambulance straight away. Because once you seek help, medical treatment can be sought very quickly. If you don't call for help, you'll be in a lot of trouble. So call an ambulance. For God's sake, please don't drive. If you're having a heart attack, driving is the last thing you should be doing. First thing, you might collapse from the heart attack itself. Not only are you a danger to yourself, but also to others on the road. So please do not drive. Get a family member to drive you straight to a nearby hospital or call an ambulance if you don't have anyone nearby to help you. Also, I always recommend you take note of some of the numbers for ambulances uh, of a nearby hospital or of the government uh, provided ambulance services. Keep it on your fridge, keep it in your memory. I don't know, whatever it is you do, make sure you remember the number when you need it the most. The next thing you can do if you have it with you is chew on a soluble aspirin. Now the dose of aspirin is around 325 to 350 milligrams. The important thing is not to swallow the aspirin because that will take time for it to digest, but to keep chewable aspirin or soluble aspirin in your house. Now, if you are in doubt about taking aspirin, say for example, your doctor has told you not to take it in the past. I am hoping that you have already called your doctor for some advice or help. So make sure you talk to your doctor about taking aspirin straight away. But what happens after you reach hospital then? So you've got into an ambulance or you got into a relative's car or you're being driven to the hospital. What happens when you reach? First thing, you will be taken to the emergency department and you will have to undergo certain blood tests. These blood tests are to make sure that there are no other causes for what is going on uh, with regards to your heart and also to confirm whether you have had a heart attack. The blood counts may demonstrate low hemoglobin, that is anemia, that can sometimes lead to heart problems, an elevated blood count, which could indicate inflammation. Kidney function is to make sure that the kidneys are functioning normally. And if an angiogram test is required, it is safe to go ahead. A troponin test is a very sensitive test that helps us determine whether you have had a heart attack or not. It by itself is not necessary, but it is a very useful adjunct or what you call additional test when it comes to someone with a heart attack. Now, what is troponin? Troponin is an enzyme that is released by the heart in response to reduced circulation. So when there is damage to the heart muscle, the levels of troponin begin to rise immediately. They peak at around six hours. So having a troponin checked within an hour or so and it being normal sometimes immediately after chest pain doesn't necessarily rule out a heart attack. What we do sometimes is repeat the troponin around six to eight hours to see the true value. 
And if that value as well is normal, then it effectively rules out a heart attack. A liver function test is also important because some of the medications that we give can affect the liver. So we need to make sure that function is normal as well. What about the other investigations? The first test that is important when it comes to a cardiac specific investigation is an electrocardiogram or an ECG. And this will tell us for sure if the patient is having a heart attack. There are certain changes that we look at and this one will help us determine with some certainty whether a patient is having a heart attack. But sometimes the ECG may be normal in the early stages. So an echocardiogram is very helpful because the changes on this particular test can precede the changes on the ECG. So an echocardiogram is a test where we image the heart using an ultrasound machine. It is a bit like the scan of the abdomen that is done or scans that are done for pregnant women to look at their babies. So the same thing we do when, uh, when it comes to looking at the heart. This will tell us if any part of the heart muscle is not moving properly. If all the parts of the heart muscle are moving properly, then that means that there has been no damage to the heart muscle, but it does not necessarily rule out a heart attack. Once the echocardiogram is done, the patient will be shifted for a test called a coronary angiogram. Now I'm going to be talking about coronary angiography and angioplasty in detail in another video, but in short or in brief, a coronary angiogram is a test where some dye is injected to the heart arteries and pictures are taken so that we can determine whether there are any narrowings or what is often called blockages in the heart artery. In an angiogram, when we do it in a patient with a heart attack, what we expect to see is a blood clot sitting in an artery that is already diseased. So the primary aim of treatment is to get rid of that blood clot, to open up the artery and to establish normal blood flow again to the heart muscle so as to save the heart muscle. So what are the treatments that can be given? So depending on which center you go to, the treatments can vary between medicines to clot busting treatment to angioplasty, which is stent implantation. Medicines are usually blood thinners such as aspirin and clopidogrel, cholesterol lowering agents called statins and certain agents called beta blockers, which slow down the heart rate and improve the blood flow to the heart muscle. But that alone is rarely sufficient for someone who is actively having a heart attack. The main treatments are actually angioplasty or clot busting treatments. Most centers now that are ready for patients with a heart attack perform primary angioplasty. And this is where an angiogram is done immediately as soon as the patient arrives. And an angioplasty is done, meaning a stent is implanted into the diseased artery which has a clot in order to open up the artery and to re-establish normal blood flow. But not every center has got a primary angioplasty set up and some centers will offer a what is called clot busting treatment or in medical terms we call it thrombolysis. Thrombolysis basically means that a blood clot is dissolved using very powerful blood thinning agents. Now the effect of these treatments are very good and it has been found that they are extremely effective in treating patients with heart attacks who have got a blood clot sitting in their heart arteries. Unfortunately the treatment is has certain side effects such as bleeding. And I have personally encountered some patients have had bleeding in the stomach or even bleeding around the brain. This is why more and more of us are now shying away from this particular treatment and opting for angioplasty because the results are certainly much better. Sometimes the clot busting treatments don't work and these patients will go on to have angioplasty done as an emergency, but it may be too late as the damage could already have been done. I may discuss some of these treatments in some future videos, so please keep an eye out for this by subscribing to my channel and please uh, take a look at some of the information I have given below as well. So what about surviving after a heart attack? Now it's important for you to know this because the most important aspect of surviving a heart attack is to seek medical attention immediately. 75% of sudden cardiac death in people in the community is linked to a heart attack and only 6% of people who have a heart attack outside hospital survive. So if you have 100 patients in the community having a heart attack who don't seek medical attention, only 6% of them survive, meaning 94% of those patients don't survive. So the most important way or the certain way to survive a heart attack or at least to increase your chances of surviving a heart attack is to seek medical attention by either seeing your doctor or going to a hospital straight away. Well, thanks again. I hope you enjoyed this discussion and found it informative. Uh, for more information, you can visit the links in the description below. And please make sure you subscribe to the channel because I will try and upload videos once a week or once every 10 days or so based on questions that have been asked by my patients or by people in the community. 
Thank you.